Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we are going to do another comparison video because people really like that last one. Let me know if you like this format, and if you do, what should we compare next? Somebody else already asked for a Linux Mint Debian Edition versus a Linux Mint Ubuntu Edition. And so I wrote that down, and that will be a con good contender. I think I might do this series on Wednesdays for a while. Let me know what you guys think about that idea. That way we keep some regular live Linux content going, and we'll stumble around some virtual machines. But anyway, uh, this time, though, I have actually installed each of the two distributions onto a separate virtual machine so that we can actually look at them as an installed rather than as a uh, just as a live key, which I think is going to be quite a bit better. And so the first one we're going to look at here is MX Linux. Now, before we dive in, just the a brief comparisons, contrastings. Uh, MX Linux and Peppermint, as of right now, are both 32-bit available and 64, of course, although Peppermint is likely to be dropping the 32-bit because it's based on Ubuntu, which has dropped 32. MX Linux being based on Debian is most likely going to keep the 32 because Debian keeps maintaining the 32-bit distributions. And so if you're looking for something on a 32-bit processor, automatically MX is probably going to be the place you're going to go for the long term, although in the short term, either one is going to work. Both of them use XFCE, although Peppermint uses some modified components of XFCE. We've already talked about some of those. We'll mention those briefly again today as they are related to the video versus MX Linux is pretty much a pure XFCE. Now, each one of these two distributions has a few separate tools to make some different uh, functions work very well out of the box. And so that's kind of where we're going to be focusing on here to look at uh, what we want to see as far as the tools, what we want to see as far as the functionality. As far as the basic out-of-the-box functionality, you're going to be pretty close uh, to each other. However, you might have slightly more compatibility on various different uh, more odd features on Peppermint because Ubuntu has done such a good job of making those things work, whereas Debian, not quite so much, and that is, of course, MX Linux base. However, MX has done a lot more things uh, to the Debian core to make a lot of those things work, so you might have a very similar experience. So let's go ahead and... Uh, have a look at uh, MX Linux first. Uh, we do have an MX Linux welcome screen, which contains several links to the online tools, um, but we also have a, a bunch of other links here to other system things. So inside here, these are your MX Linux tools, which we will look at here in a bit. We also have the tweaks. So uh, you can actually go ahead and do some tweaks. And it, what it, this will actually do is it has a restore feature. Now, Peppermint also has a panel restore feature as well. So both of them are going to have a, a restore panel. But over here, you can actually come in and you can make some adjustments to the panel. Of course, MX Linux gives you a slightly different side panel versus Peppermint, a more traditional panel for the most part. That's fairly easy. You can just kind of right click it, move the panel, edit the panel, and move it wherever you want. So it's just kind of not really a lot different there. We do have a lot of different uh, custom theme sets. We have MX Dark, MX Light. We have just a couple of different uh, panel settings in there. A few more options inside of Peppermint as far as some basic theming options, but that may or may not be of interest to you. Uh, wrong button. Let's go back up to the tools. So focusing on the differences, your biggest differences are going to be your tools. All right, so MX Linux has a few things in it that make it a very, very nice system. Some things that they have put into it. So of course we have a live USB maker, which I can't remember if Peppermint has one. I don't think they do, but it might. Uh, being based on uh, having a lot of things from Linux Mint, it very well may, it may not. We have a snapshot. This is something Peppermint does not have. You can create a live ISO image of your running system. So you can uh, get this guy set up, install all the software that you want, create a snapshot of it. Particularly nice if you have a, a business you need to deploy a similar computer image across a variety of different distributions. This gives you the feature out of the box, although you can install that. Uh, we did see that uh, we do have an update notification over here. So if we uh, go ahead and click the updates here, this is a not quite as nice of an updater that Peppermint is going to have with uh, Peppermint has Linux Mint update. But you can kind of see what's going on so we can go ahead and upgrade them or not. We are not going to run the upgrade just because 
We're going to uh, just be on in here for a few more minutes. But you can see it is going to notify you of upgrades. You can base uh, run your upgrade updates, upgrades right in there. You have features here for boot options, um, boot repairs, menu editors, cleanup, all things that are lacking in Peppermint. We do have a codex installer. Peppermint has the option to install the codex on the install. MX Linux does not. So we do have a codec installer if you need multimedia functioning to work. And you do have NVIDIA driver installer. However, Peppermint is going to have a complete driver installer for anything, not just your graphics cards. Uh, other things that we have, we have Conky, of course, built in, bash configuration. Um, we do have some uh, package installers here. One of the nice things about the package installer here is they have cleaned it up quite a bit. Now, of course, you have three package installers on Peppermint. You have Linux Mint uh, Software Center, which is amazing. You have the GNOME Software Center, which I like quite a bit less, and we have Synaptic. This one over here, this guy here is is a system where you can just kind of search for what you're looking for. I like this because it's easy to use. It's quick to use. It gives you a lot of neat options like installing Waterfox and Pale Moon are not exactly common things to find inside of a distribution out of the box. So those are major advantages. And you can very clearly see, you can just select what you want and install it from the easy to use list of things here. We also have the ability to install different desktop environments. If you wanna install a different desktop environment, very easy to do here, uh, doable in Peppermint, but certainly gonna be a little bit more difficult. And you can kind of see here just so many nice options and things that you, we have. These are more or less just your most common applications here. If you want something more, uh, more succinct, we actually do have Synaptic installed on both of our systems. Here's a repo manager. Here's fixing your keys and formatting a USB device. We're going to go ahead and see if those features are inside of Peppermint. All right, as far as software out of the box, that's uh, some people care about it, some people don't. Uh, some people, you know, you can't please with anything. We have full feature, light featured. Uh, development here, you can see that we do actually have a lot more software installed on MX Linux than you would on Peppermint. You know, we have uh, GIMP, it looks like we probably have a full office suite. We have Firefox, HexChat, Thunderbird. Uh, transmission under our multimedia. <clears throat> we have also Mixer, Clementine, VLC, XF Burn. Uh, the MX tools, of course, these are all the different tools that we were looking at earlier. Under your office, we have a, an ebook reader installed out of the box. We have our full LibreOffice suite. And then, of course, we have our systems and settings. Here we have an, an ad blocker tool in here. This is something that Peppermint also has. Looks like this is, looks like we do have more features. So there's four services that I remember. This one is listing five. Four in Peppermint, five in MX Linux. I think that's the case. We will look at that in a bit. So overall, very, very similar systems. I would say that the running the tools to fix different things is going to be a little bit more difficult over an MX Linux uh, in that they're not quite as, as UI polished, but that probably is not going to matter because we have the tools to fix them. So it doesn't really matter. So MX Linux, uh, very nice, very lightweight. Uh, you can see it's only using 7% of our memory. There are six gigs in this, uh, in this individual machine. So, uh, you know, 7% of six gigs, a uh, very small amount. Let's actually see if HTOP is installed, which it is. And so with HTOP installed, we are running right now on 480 megabytes of memory. So there is MX Linux, and we will have a look at Peppermint next. And here we are on Peppermint, which I started out with HTOP first. Uh, we have 325 megabytes, so very similar system specs. This one's using a little bit less memory, but before you say, hey, this is lighter on memory, understand that I looked at HTOP at the end of the last video after poking around a lot of things, which can add some things to the memory. So if I remember, I'll go ahead and pull up uh, HTOP again after the end of this. But here we are on Peppermint. So Peppermint overall, I think, has a lot more polish for a very similar system. It does 
pay attention to every fine detail rather than just saying, hey, let's just use XFCE and you know, whatever comes with it. They've done a lot of things like swapping out Thunar with Nemo, which I think is a better file manager. We have a much nicer update and upgrade manager in the Linux Mint update manager. And we actually have a few different options, like I said, for software management. So we have one of them is the one from Linux Mint, which is that one. And the other one is our GNOME software store. And so we do have a couple of those options there. So of course, this one over here is going to have the ability to sort out what's flat pack, what's not. Uh, we also have our basic GNOME one over here, which is going to be able to install anything. And of course, we still have the Synaptic Package Manager. So as far as uh, the things that really makes Peppermint and, um, and our... Um, MX Linux a little bit different is the settings control. I think Peppermint, uh, again, everything is is kind of still here. We see a lot of similar features. Uh, Peppermint definitely looks more stylish and more attention to the UI details. Uh, but maybe it's not as organized as well. Maybe you just can't find stuff as much. And before, while well, I'm thinking of it, yes, it does. Looks like we do have USB image writers and we do have... Uh, stick formatters, although I do not believe we have any means to create an ISO like we had. So our Peppermint Control Center here, this is controlling window managers, desktop effects, keyboard shortcuts, and things like that. We have customization. Like I said, we have a lot more themes uh, as far as with just some generic basic themes. And then we have the peppermint in several different colors. So these are the reds. We have peppermints in sands, in lights, and in darks. So we have a lot of different options as far as your theming is concerned over there. Manual color controls. And again, a lot of icon choices to match the various styles that you might want to use. So we're just going to go ahead and keep that how it is. We also have panel preferences very much. Of course, MX Linux has the ability to backup uh, very easily, automatically. This one, you have to manually hit the backup and restore button. So you can actually see a variety of different things. Actually, I never knew this was in here. Let's play with this. I never knew this was in here. So let's have a look at GNOME. Double, do we double click it? Do we click on save? Let's import the configuration. Okay, uh, I'll have to look into that. I did not know they, they actually had a variety of different things in here. And, um, okay, is that it? Okay, yep, so here we are. Just kind of click on these guys. Save. Oh, there it is. It's apply configuration. There it is. Didn't even know this existed, honestly. Um, hey, you learn something new every day, right? Even when you're used to this. So here's our basic uh, older options for XFCE. Here's uh, various Zubuntu's. I do actually really like the Peppermint 10 configuration. So hey, didn't know that was there, but you can actually create new ones. You can uh, tweak it and whatever else. That's cool. Uh, wallpapers, of course. One of the downsides, I hate the fact that not only is Dropbox installed, but it's also integrated into the settings panel. Even if you remove Dropbox, I believe this stays in the settings panels. And I hate Dropbox, actually, so I hate the fact it's in here, uh, but it is. Uh, here we can reset all our panel uh, to, uh, to defaults, much easier to do, although MX Linux does have one of those options as well. We can toggle sounds on and off, adjust our notifications, software and update settings, just a variety of different things. Hardware, we have additional drivers to install different drivers, not only your graphics drivers, but any proprietary drivers, because this is the driver install utility from Ubuntu, which is an excellent application. Uh, audio equalizers, displays, uh, network configurations. Now, one of the things that really makes uh, makes um, MX Linux, excuse me, uh, Peppermint Linux here stick out is the 
integration of the ICE applications out of the box. So of course with the ICE applications, these are a way to create containerized SSBs for each of your different features. This is the exact reason why I chose Peppermint to use for my banking computer uh, in production because I can isolate all of my bank accounts into their own separate cases and none of my banks can see any of my other banks based on cookies. You can choose Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, or Firefox. Assuming any of those are installed, the only reason Firefox is our only option right now is it's the only web browser to install. Firefox always isolates them, but you can isolate your SSBs within the other other ones as well. We can remove them. This kind of leads us into our software. MX Linux has a lot more software installed out of the box. Well, we do have a basic list of different system tools in here. Um, we do, we have a lot of what we have in here are even all of these games here. These are not actually games installed on the applications like they were on MX Linux. These are all online games that's actually taking you to, uh, it's taking you to an online website through a web browser. And I think that that would probably turn some people off if they didn't realize that these are actually going online um, to play these games online. And I don't know why you'd necessarily want to like install solitaire from the Linux repos. All right. Um, as far as other graphics, you can see very few, uh, very few s software packages installed by default, the bare minimums, even your office has all these ice applications going to these instead of going to actual like LibreOffice. Now you have to understand the reason why they did this is because Peppermint was actually originally created as a, an answer, a Linux answer to the Chromebook, which is an originally also based on an online only type device. And that's why everything here is so, so much focused on the SSBs. Well, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's not like it installed the Microsoft stuff. We can just come in here and just remove, you know, remove all this Microsoft, scary, creepy, Microsoft, dangerous stuff. Just get rid of all that. And now if I go into my office, you'll see that we don't have those there. Just left with our Google Drive and our Gmail, which I can just kill those right now. All right, inside of, of, of course, our settings, here's our advertiser blocker over here. Very similar to what we had before. I think there were... Uh, four, uh, there, there's four options here. There were five options in MX Linux. So you have, uh, one more, uh, source to block from. They do function the same way by modifying your hosts file. So there is Peppermint. Um, overall Peppermint is, if you're looking for something a little bit more stylish, a little bit more, uh, friendly on the user interface. I think Peppermint's definitely the way to go. It does seem to have a little bit more polish and being based on Ubuntu, it's going to have a lot of the functions and features that Ubuntu has built in, such as a lot more attention to detail for working on more hardware. So you might have a better hardware experience uh, if you are going to be running Peppermint over MX Linux. Um, since I said we wouldn't forget, let's go ahead and run HTOP again. So you can see we're about the same system memory. I think the other one was the other one, 480 or 580. I can't remember. We are very, very close, a uh, very small amount of memory being used on both of these systems. Both of them are excellent choices. You're not going to go wrong with either one, but hopefully this video helped you to identify which one of these Linux distributions you might use. Both of these are going to be excellent for lower spec machines. Like I said, I use Peppermint for my banking computer, which I do not use on low spec, but I also use Peppermint for my writing computer, which is a Lenovo S21e. That is a very low end computer, two gigs of soldered RAM. I can't even update it. And that computer runs perfectly fine with a lot of battery life. Just it's so light. It's so functional. Peppermint is an awesome distribution. Although I'd probably have a very similar experience with MX Linux as well. So either one of these are great choices for low end, uh, low end hardware. Both of them are worth having a look at, but hopefully this video gave you some things to think about. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments down below.